Saying Merry Christmas to at least two people. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So tomorrow is Christmas, right? Christmas Day, and at church, on, in our main sanctuary, uh, we have uh, Christmas. There will be Christmas cantata. Hello. <laughs> okay. okay. Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, tomorrow we have uh, Christmas cantata, so I hope all of you would come and celebrate the birth of Jesus tomorrow, okay? Um, as Christmas draw nears, draw near, uh, we hear from the news. Uh, one of the hottest places that we should visit during holiday season is the Christmas market. Have you heard of Christmas market? Some of you may have visited already, but this is one of the hottest places nowadays among the NG generation. Uh, I've heard that you have to make an online reservation in order to get a ticket to enter the place. It's free, but you have to reserve in advance. Uh, it's not easy, it's already booked, and I wanted to visit this place, but I failed. Uh, so one of the trends is to take photos in front of the beautiful, huge Christmas tree and then upload it in Instagram. That's one of the trends, right? <laughs> and what do you hear? News about luxurious, expensive Christmas cakes. Do you know how much these cost? It is sell, it's, um, it's, it's sell in the hotel bakery and each cake cost around $300. Yet, it's all sold out. Yeah, so it's amazing, it's surprising to see how Christmas cake could be, like how expensive and luxurious it, it could be. During Christmas, we, like mothers, are very busy buying Christmas gifts for all the family members, all friends, right? And sometimes we get stressed because uh, we notice that we spend a lot of money on buying gifts, okay? And, and sometimes we have to eat out during Christmas, so that is a burden too, isn't it? Children get excited because they're waiting for Santa to get presents, right? So uh, Christmas is, I guess, one of the joyous uh, joyful and happiest holidays throughout the world, despite religion. Don't you agree? Yeah. But as a Christian, we need to think why we are happy during the season, Christmas, okay? So today, during the sermon, uh, let us think, examine our hearts and think why, the reason why we should be happy on Christmas Day. Um, Christmas, okay? What is Christmas? Whose birthday is it? Jesus. Yeah, Christmas is simple. It's Jesus. We celebrate the birth of Jesus, right? So we're celebrating his birthday. Okay, but who gets the presents? We get the presents. That's awkward. But as I mentioned last week during the sermon, um, God the Father gave his son the name, you remember? Emmanuel, right? Meaning in Hebrew, God with us. Im anaknu el. Okay, meaning God, us, with us, God. Okay? So, thinking about Emmanuel, God with us, through Jesus Christ, it means that God became human in the form of baby Jesus. Okay? So, God came to us. God is with us. And if we think about uh, the beginning throughout the Old Testament period, God always wanted to be with us, right? But in a different form, and we're going to check out how God dwelled among His people. What do you think? The beginning, imagine the beginning of creation. Let's say this is the Garden of Eden, okay? The Garden of Eden, and let's read a verse related to it all together. One, two, three. The Lord God walked in the garden of Eden in the cool of the day and called to the man, where are you? Okay. So this is the part when 
Adam sinned against God. But before, we can assume that before the fall of Adam, how was the relationship with Adam and Eve with God? We can imagine that God was approachable. God was visible. God was touchable. And before man sinned against God, Adam and Eve, the first human, actually talked with God, communed with God, and met with God on a daily basis. They walked side by side together in the Garden of Eden. That's what happened in the beginning. That's how God was with men. But what happened? After the fall, after Adam sinned against God, what happened? This intimate relationship had been broken. And they were because of their sin, the holy and righteous God cannot bear the sinful man. So both of them were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And the relationship that they had, the approachable, the visible, the touchable God, became an impossible thing for men. They could not approach God anymore. Okay? But still, God wanted to be with men. Even, even though they sinned, God wanted to be with the sinful men, but in a different way. What is this? A tabernacle. Okay? God ordered to Moses to build him a tabernacle. A tabernacle is a place, it's a portable, God-designed portable tent. And he promised that he would dwell in a certain place, the holy place. Okay, that was God's promise. Okay? Let's read a verse related, related to the tabernacle. Exodus 25, 22. One, two, three. There I will meet you on the ark of the testimony. I will speak with you and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell in their midst. So God said, okay, although you sin, although I cannot bear your sin, still I want to be among you. Okay? So this was his way okay, of becoming dwelling with us through the tabernacle. Right? And God promised to dwell in that place. You see the pillar of cloud? That was a sign that God's presence was there. And people will know, ah, God is there. And the relationship they had, the people had with God, was fear. It wasn't an intimate relation. There was no relationship. It was only that they knew, oh, God is with us, but inside the tabernacle, through the tabernacle, that was it. They couldn't approach him further. Later on, King Solomon built a temple, and God was pleased with that. So he promised that he would dwell in the Holy of the Holies in the temple, and that he would listen to their prayers. Okay. 1 Kings 9, 2 and 3, let's read it together. The Lord appeared to him a second time as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. The Lord said to him, I have heard the prayer and plea you have made before me. I have consecrated this temple, which you have built, by putting my name there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. Okay. So, in the temple, God promised to dwell in the temple, the Holy of the Holies. This was the way that God dwelled among Israelites. Okay? But when we think of, but God decided to make a new way. This was throughout the period of the Old Testament period. And, and the starting of the New Testament, what happens? Jesus' birth. Jesus came to us, right? God decided to open a new way for him to be with us, and that way was to come in, God come to us in the form of baby Jesus. And we call that incarnation, God's incarnation, okay? This is a very important fact because before, before the birth of Jesus, 
God dwelled among the people through tabernacle, through temple, right? But there was no intimate relationship among the people. People couldn't see God. People couldn't approach God. People didn't know who God was. If they approached too close, they would die in that spot. But after the birth of Jesus, it's God coming to us as a baby. A baby, a touchable, approachable, visible God. Okay, It's a new thing. And because of his birth, his coming to us as a baby, Christmas, okay, it's a good message for us. Because through him, we know him. We know God. We can touch God. We could experience God. Not only that, he made a new way to have an intimate relationship with God. <laughs> Through Jesus, God restored that intimate relationship we once had in Garden of Eden. And he restored that. Okay? In today's passage, it explains about the meaning of God with us. Remember the name Emmanuel, God with us? He gave it to his son, Jesus. And this verse explains about what it means, the incarnation. Let's read it all together. Philippians 2, 6 to 8. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. So through this passage, we could, we could come up with three things, three facts of the meaning of God with us. Number one, okay, Jesus became human. Jesus became human. He was born. He grew up. He got old, and then he died, just like us. He went, while he was living on earth, he experienced joy, happiness, sorrow, sadness, suffering, pain, fear, and death. So he's able to comfort those who are suffering because he has gone through that himself. Because Jesus was fully man. He knows how we feel. He knows what we're going through. And because of that, he's the only one who could help us to make it through it. Okay. Number oh, sorry. Number two, Jesus emptied himself. It says Jesus was equal with God. That means Jesus is God. Jesus, the creator, became a created being. Can you imagine that? A creator is, there's no end and there's no beginning. That means a creator cannot die. Even though he wants to die, he cannot die. So he became a created being like men. Why? In order to die for our sins. God came, Jesus came and was born why? In order to die for our sins. Okay? He became a perfect sacrifice for our sins. And because of that, we are not condemned anymore. There's no part, there's, no, there's nothing that we have to do in our part. Why? Because Jesus had done it all, all by himself. He, he was cursed, he was punished. And he died on the cross on our behalf. He finished the work of salvation. And that is a good news for us. Because on Christmas Day, he was born to finish the work of salvation. And because of that, we are happy and joyful. Number three, Jesus became a servant. Imagine a creator. Okay, He's worthy. He's the only one worthy to be praised. But he came not to be served by men, but he came to serve us. Okay? By doing so, he showed us 
an example, a perfect example, how we should live. We are the redeemed people who are forgiven by God. Okay? And he's showing us how to live as a redeemed people. To love one another by serving, imitating what Jesus had done by serving one another in love. So if we think about, once again, why we are happy, it's not because of the presents that we will get. It's not because of the success or the promises, bright future, no. It's because Jesus born, Jesus came to us, and he, he made, he opened doors to have an access to the unapproachable God. Through faith in Jesus, we have the access to approach God without fear, okay? We can freely approach God, touch God, and have an intimate relationship with God without fear. Because Jesus has done it all. And, and the birth of Christmas is the first start of that salvation. That's why we are happy. Amen? Let's pray.